Good morning. My name is Lieutenant Eric Williams. I'm with the Texas Tech University Police Department in Lubbock. And I'm here today to talk about active shooter. Now this presentation is what we give to our civilian uh, students, faculty, and staff. It's training to help you to know what to do uh, should you ever unfortunately find yourself in an active shooter event. What we're going to learn today is this. We're going to see what an active shooter is. We're going to look at some early warning signs of an active shooter. And of course we're going to learn what to do when it happens. I hope you're here today to learn how to live because in the active shooter event that is the overriding objective of everything. Let's look at the actual definition of an active shooter. To begin with an active shooter. One or more subjects who participate in a random or systematic shooting spree demonstrating their intent to continuously harm others. An active shooter's over overriding objective appears to be that of mass murder. Mass murder, okay? Rather than other criminal conduct such as robbery, kidnapping, things of that nature. All right, let's look at some of the characteristics of these active shooters. First of all, these guys desire to kill or seriously injure other people, and they have no concern for their own safety. They're going to systematically search out and destroy victims. They're going to search out and kill those people first, and they're not going to stop searching and destroying until they're either stopped by law enforcement, suicide, and guys, historically, suicide is generally how these things end. And when we talk about other intervention, that means you. All right, let's take a look at the active shooter profiles. To begin with, the perpetrators have usually been harassed or picked on, whether it's in school, their work, or wherever they may happen to have their sphere of associates at. Their character or status is going to be attacked on a repeated basis. The problems are not resolved by the authorities in control. They begin to develop what's called persecutory ideation. Now let's talk about possible early warning signs. To begin with, we talk about changes in dress, speech, or expressions. Increased agitation, anxiety, isolation, and depression. We talk about substance abuse, preoccupation with death or violent act. Let's talk about violent video games. Now here's some suggestions you need to think about and live by, okay? Number one, never assume that your current location is exempt from violence because there is no place on this earth that is exempt from violence. Understand you have an obligation for your own safety as well as that of the people around you. Understand that generally people are not in a heightened state of awareness about their safety. Recognize that there are people in crisis around you at times, and that leads into the next point. Recognize that there really are people in the world that will steal from you, people in the world that will hurt you, and for no other reason, they just want to. And yes, there are people in the world who will kill you. All right, here's where we get into the actual uh, things that we're going to do in the active shooter event. To begin with, we want you to use your senses and instincts to survive. Your senses, obviously, in the active shooter, especially being sight and hearing. Instinct. So you want to look and listen. Bad things are happening, do not panic. You've got to respond immediately. Three things, these are the big three. You either get out, you hide out, or you take out the person, which means defend yourself. Speed and distance are your friends. That means putting as much distance between you and the shooter as you possibly can as quickly as possible. If you can't get out, we need to hide out. And what that means is getting out of the shooter's view. Shut the door, lock it up, and barricade. Then we need to set up for the counterattack, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. You want to make sure you turn off the lights, silence your cell phones, silence any computers, anything, and be quiet. Guys, there's two kinds of people in an active shooter event. There are people who can fight. There are people who cannot fight. So those people need to set up for the counterattack. We've, we've shut the door. We've barricaded. We put desk and furniture up against this door, right? We want to put our people who cannot fight in one of these hard corners. The people who can fight need to be stacked up on the door, just like a SWAT team does. You stack up single file along this wall right here. Okay, about a foot or two off the door. Everybody who cannot fight is behind the people who can fight. Now, when we stack up on this wall right here, we're in this nice little file, we probably want to put as our number one guy right here, our biggest, toughest guy. He's going to go after the weapon, okay? He is going to latch on to that weapon, and with all of his weight and all of his might, he's going to go straight down to the floor. Like I say, if the guy, the shooter makes it in, Number one is going to go after the gun. Take it straight to the floor, okay, with all of his weight and all of his might. Everybody else behind him is going to attack the shooter, okay? And what I mean by that, they're going to specifically go after two targets on that shooter. Number one target being the eyes. The number two target is going to be the throat. Once you get the shooter down, we have to secure him. 
we need to secure the weapon. And when I say that, that means basically just separating the shooter from the weapon. And then we need to secure the room. We need to post somebody at the door to be looking up and down the hallway to make sure, A, that there's not another shooter, or B, that person's also going to be the first liaison with the law enforcement officers that are coming in. And we need to stop the dying. Now what if it happens in a different building from the building that you're in? Guys, it doesn't matter. When you start getting notifications that there's an active shooter going on on campus or even near campus, you need to barricade yourself in. Do what we just talked about. Shut the door. Get in your safe room, obviously. Shut the door. Barricade yourself in. Silence everything and just monitor the situation and wait it out. Okay? The reason why is because active shooters can be very mobile. If you're caught in an open area, we want you to try to find cover first. Okay? If you have to use a car as cover, put yourself behind the engine and put the engine between you and where those bullets are coming from. Big, big trees make pretty good cover. Uh, the statues and things like that, that you will see on campus. Now if you can't find cover, we want you to run. Warn others that may be coming into the area that you're running out of. Now you're going to get to an area, a safe area, then you need to get on your phone and call 911. The most important thing we need to know is where were you at when the shooting was going on or where that shooter is right now if you know. Now you're going to meet the police at some point. You need to holster up that weapon, okay? Secure the weapon and show your empty open hands to those officers. Just follow our commands at that point. When those officers arrive, don't get in the way of the officers. Don't touch the officers. And always show your empty open hands when you're in contact with those officers. Now you're going to get searched, especially if you're at ground zero. You're going to get searched. You're going to get told to help. You're going to get evacuated. Then you're going to get interviewed. You're going to have investigators come in. You're going to want to know what you saw, what you heard. You might have to write a statement, whatever the case may be, because you're a potential witness to a crime scene at this point. Guys, I hope that you have learned how you're going to survive an active shooter today. We've talked about what an active shooter is. We've talked about the early warning signs of an active shooter and especially what to do when it happens. Now it's up to you to take this back to your workplace, to your uh, classmates, to your professors, whatever, and start designing what it is that you're going to do in your particular work areas to uh, be able to mitigate an active shooter should it ever happen.